This is the uh, Morso 8188. Um, this is the, the, the largest in Morso's uh, convector stoves. Uh, similar to the, the, the 6 series uh, and the 7 series in, in, in the Morso convectors, the 8 series, the 8188 uh, here, it's a solid cast iron stove. Uh, a lot of other convector stoves are, are just steel stoves with cast iron doors, cast iron lids. This is a full cast iron body, uh, the sides, the doors, the top, every part of it is made from cast iron. Uh, the quality of the cast iron with, with all more so castings is, is, is fantastic. Uh, what I'm going to do is just uh, get it fired up here and then we can see it burning. Um, Great controllability uh, on the, the, the 8188. The 8188 is not a DEFRA approved stove, uh, it's just a, a standard um, uh, stove. So we generally find on, on non DEFRA approved stoves we, we, we do get a, a greater uh, controllability on it. Again, with, with, with any stove, um, we want to have a very, very strong pre fire. So I have a fire lighter just down here. Um, lots of dry kindling. Um, I've got the air control uh, which is controlled at the top of the stove, over to the right it's fully open but what I'm going to do is just leave the door slightly ajar um, in the, uh, just to allow a little bit more uh, air to get out of the stove so if we just leave that slightly ajar it'll just help the draw uh, and assist the pre-fire. We can see uh, from, from the wood we can hear, hear that the wood's cracking and popping a little bit. Now this is a little bit disappointing because um, it's an indication that the, that, the, that the kindling is actually a little bit wet. Uh, certainly in the field it, it was fine and, and it was sold to us as dry kindling, but you do get this. Um, uh, you, know, you, you can get more so do sell moisture beers which you can inject into the wood, um, which shows you the moisture rating. I didn't check this wood. Um, that cracking and, and popping is a sign that, 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 that there is moisture within the wood. Um, I think our, our pre-fire is, is, is probably okay here, so what I'm going to just do is, is, is just close the door here and just let the stove take care of itself. As I said, my, my uh, air is open full here. We can see immediately when we close the door, the fire does die down. Uh, and again, this is because we're now just relying on the preheated secondary and preheated tertiary air, which is top air coming from the stove. So uh, we should have a, a good enough fire there established for, for it to take over. Okay, so uh, the, the pre-fire has burned down. We've got a couple of nice colds here, so we're now ready to uh, put our first refuel in. Um, so I'm just going to open the door and just have to do this quite slowly just to make sure that no ash uh, comes out. Uh, again, opening the door, we can change the pressure slightly of the stove. So we just uh, generally I just open and hold it for a few seconds before opening it. Um, I don't want, I want to do this reasonably quickly, uh, so our, our chamber doesn't burn down, uh, doesn't cool down uh, quickly. We don't want to burn a stove with the door open. We want to always burn it with the, uh, the door closed. I'm going to put uh, the, 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 the fire chamber is very very hot here. Uh, I'm going to put a few pieces of, of wood in, um, just to keep going. Should be fine there. Just, just close that off. In my, my secondary air control, my, uh, my top air control, secondary and tertiary is open full here. We want to keep this open full until we've really got a very good bed established. That's whenever we can start thinking about closing and closing it down slightly. So we'll see here very quickly. We can see the, 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 the first uh, refuel starting to catch uh, from, from the, the cold. So we'll, we'll watch this for, for a few minutes and just watch it taking off. We can see the uh, preheated tertiary air through the, the, the back jets here with, as the air is being forced through and um, we get this little bit of a swirling effect. Um, again, this, this is burning off toxins coming off the, 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 the flue gases. The difference between smoke and, uh, and, and flame is temperature. So whenever we're sitting at a high, high enough temperature, we can see there's no smoke coming off the, 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 the wood fuel. Uh, if we were at a much lower temperature, or if the fuel was very for a higher moisture content where we can't get the temperature into it, we would see quite a lot of smoke coming off this. Uh, but the fuel we're burning is good. Uh, we've got a moisture content of about 12% on it. Um, so we can see it ticks off very quickly and there's no real smoke uh, visible within the, um, within the, 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 the fire chamber. 
Okay, so the more so has been lit um, about 25 minutes now, so our, our first refuel is uh, has carbonated and it's starting to look very, very nice. What I'm going to do is just turn down the control here, the air control on the more so. Um, just turn this down. We don't need to be burning just quite at the, at the, the, the rate that we are. So you can see immediately when you turn it down, the, 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 the flames start to, 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 to calm down. We get these little um, bursts coming from the tertiary air control, and again, that's just really the hot air uh, coming through from the from the flue gases. It takes a, about a minute or so for it to settle, and then it will start to calm down. 